Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of uh, World Economics, our uh, video blog with uh, Fundación Rafael del Pino. We're going to talk about helicopter money. Helicopter money is one thing that we are hearing everywhere right now because Hong Kong has decided to implement an experiment of helicopter money uh, uh, due to the impact on the economy of both the protest and then the coronavirus and the slowdown of China. Uh, let's start from Hong Kong. Mm? Let's start uh, with Hong Kong because uh, one of the big, big mistakes that many people make is that you can make this experiment everywhere. Hong Kong, for starters, has an incredible amount of foreign exchange reserves. An amazing amount of foreign exchange reserves, more than $128 billion. And it, it, the, the experiment is going to be less than 5% of its reserves. In any case, Hong Kong as well is only going to spend seven billion dollars, uh, seven billion euros, sorry, the equivalent of seven billion euros in this uh, experiment. So we're talking about a very moderate expense uh, and a very moderate impact on the currency because of its massive uh, reserves in foreign, in foreign exchange uh, uh, currencies. So this is a, a, a very important factor. Second very important factor about Hong Kong. Hong Kong is not only a country with massive foreign exchange reserves, it's a country with enormous inflows of capital due to its thriving financial sector. So we need to be extremely aware of the differences of the Hong Kong economy relative to other economies. Because the idea of helicopter money sounds relatively attractive if you don't think about the consequences. Think about the consequences in uh, countries or economies where those levels of reserves don't exist and where those levels of inflows of financial capital don't exist either. The Eurozone is a clear example. Helicopter money basically does the following. Uh, the, the government gives a certain amount of money to each citizen. Yeah? Uh, so that they spend it. And it's fungible because you cannot save it and you cannot transfer it. So you basically have to spend it in some form uh, in the economy. The idea is to relaunch the economy in an environment of, uh, of weakness. However, there are numerous problems with helicopter money. The first one is that it creates a false uh, demand signal. It, it works almost like a subsidy or like a mini um, real estate bubble. What it does is that uh, at the beginning, and because it's fungible and fungible in a very short period of time, people are going to go rapidly use that money and spend it wherever they want. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the problem is that that creates a demand signal that is false and, may, and if companies start to increase capacity, start to increase activity, start to hire more people because of that uh, inflow of uh, uh, artificial money, then when it stops, it immediately creates a backlash, a much larger backlash than was created before. Obviously, you may say, okay, then continue with helicopter money. It goes like this. The first uh, 1,200 euros or equivalent that the uh, Chinese uh, authorities, that the Hong Kong authorities will provide, will very likely generate a, a boost of activity in the economy in the first year. The second one, if you do it, starts to generate diminishing returns. It works almost like a, like a, like a fake subsidy. It works like a subsidy on something that uh, has absolutely nothing to do with uh, a real demand. So not even in the, in the first three years, you would start to see the diminishing returns. Now, if you don't have the level of reserves and the level of uh, inflow of capital that Hong Kong has, on top of that, by the second year, the third year, deficits start to go through the roof, more importantly, not because the amount of, that you put into, into the uh, helicopter money doesn't flow back as, um, 
as higher levels of a tax income because the multiplier is very poor. Remember that what you're trying to do is to offset uh, declining consumption in the economy. So it basically does not generate higher uh, tax revenues. It generates a little bit of an offset of a slump in tax revenues. But in the second, third year, you start to see the negative impact on real salaries, the negative impact on uh, the purchasing power of wages and savings, and the negative impact, obviously, on inflation and the, and the currency of the country. Literally, uh, the helicopter money uh, experiment is going to be exactly what Argentina does. Uh, what does Argentina do? Argentina prints pesos what, uh, in order to finance the growing hiring of uh, people in the public sector that are paid with newly created money. That is helicopter money in its essence, no? So there is absolutely no evidence that these um, experiments, which by the way have been uh, undertaken in some cities, in some countries that issued some form of like uh, city paper, city money, in order to uh, provide to citizens, in order to spend a little bit more, it has never worked. There is absolutely zero evidence that any of those cities have grown more or improved their employment or their uh, investment uh, more than the rest of the economy. And it has absolutely, there is absolutely no evidence that it has offset the significantly or at all the impact of a slump in uh, economic growth or a crisis. In any case, will they implement it? Of course they will. It will happen. It will happen and we will see that its impact is going to be not just very poor but diminishing. Thank you very much.